All right. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> well, if you'll turn your Bibles to John chapter 16. I've been talking about over the past few weeks about uh, the Holy Spirit and uh, how he needs to be magnified, that he's in us. God, God, God's in us. Here in the book of Colossians says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. It, it's uh, God in us working through us that are, that's going to accomplish the things that he needs to be done in this earth. We know that we talked about how Jesus was here for <clears throat> 33 years or so and how he finished his ministry and he left and he's not here anymore. But he sent his Holy Spirit, and, his, and the Spirit of God is, uh, is who's in this earth now. And he's been here for some 2,000 years, and uh, I think most of the church kind of forgot about him. They just, you know, they hear about or he talked about the Holy Spirit, but they don't, they don't put the uh, value on, on who he is and what he does like I think we need to. <clears throat> to know the kingdom of God, we need somebody to show us, to guide us, to teach us of the ways of this new kingdom that we live in. And that is, that comes through the power of the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 16, in verse number 13, <clears throat> he said, however, when he comes, the spirit, when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you in all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. So the Holy Spirit is the, the spirit of truth. Now, we know Jesus said, my words are, are spirit and their life, and he said, my words is truth. So what the Holy Spirit is, being the spirit of truth, he's the spirit of the word. He's the spirit of the word. He's the one who causes the word to come to life. He's the one who gives you that rhema or that, that revelation of, of the word. Because without the revelation of the word, it's just words. It's just words. The word's written on a piece of paper. You know, the, the, when you look at your Bible, the print on your Bible was uh, made by a machine. Some, some, a machine typed it out. A copy machine copied it. And so it's, it's just words unless it's energized by what's behind the word. And so the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth or he's the spirit of the word. He's, he's behind everything that was written in your Bible. The Bible says that the word of God was written by holy men of God as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit who moved upon the hands of of uh, Peter and James and John and Paul and all the writers of the Bible to write these words that we're reading. But if, if they are not energized or revealed to us by, our, by the Holy Spirit, then they're just words. See, to a lot of people, when a lot of people read the Bible, and you might remember that if you read the Bible before you were a Christian, they were just words. They had no meaning. But once you've been, once you've been born again, and once you can see and perceive the kingdom of God, then the things of God become, become so real. The word of God becomes real. This, this Bible is so real to me. It is, it is life to me. It is life to me as much as, as uh, the food I eat from my physical body. This brings life. It, it has become so uh, important in my life that it's like I can't go a day without it. I need it every day. And, that, and that, it's a big problem when when people get into life, if you go through life and you don't have the Word of God in your life every day, you'll find out. You'll, you'll soon begin to backslide. You'll soon begin to do things that you, you didn't think you were doing anymore. Or you'll find yourself lost and you'll find yourself worrying about things you weren't worrying of, about before. You'll find yourself uh, getting sick. You'll find yourself, you know, things just not working right. And that's what happens, that, that would be the same thing if you were to quit eating regular food for your body. After a while, your body would get sick, your body would get tired. Now your body can go quite a, quite a, a while without food, but you know, you start going a couple weeks without food and, and um, you're gonna start noticing it, that your body's not functioning like it normally, normally would. And if you, go, if you go a couple months without food, you'll probably die. 
And see, that's the same way with the, with the spiritual food, the, 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 the Word of God. And we have to have it in our life. The more you have it, the more peace you have, the more joy you have, the more love you have, the more power you have. It all comes from the Word, but it's not just the Word. It's the Word that is energized by the Holy Spirit. So he says, however, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, that he will guide you into all truth. So that we need a guide to guide us in this new kingdom that we live in. And it's the Holy Spirit who will do it, who will guide us. Verse 14 says, he will glorify me. And who is, who is Jesus? Jesus is the word. He's going to glorify Jesus, the, our Savior, but he's also going to glorify the word. For he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said, he will take your mind and declare it to you. He's always pointing to Jesus. The Holy Spirit will not point uh, people to man. He will not point people to organizations. Jesus will always be the focus. He will always point um, us to Jesus, and he will show us our inheritance. He'll begin to reveal to us. <clears throat> See, part of, the, part of the problem is most people... Don't take God serious. And I, and I pray that you do, and I pray that during the next, especially the, this, this time of seeking that I asked you to do, that you'll take God more serious. See, I, I don't, it doesn't make sense to me that we follow God, we follow the Word of God, and, and that Jesus bore our sicknesses, carried our diseases, He paid, paid the price for everything, that we should, we as a church, should walk around sick and broke, oppressed, and depressed. That doesn't even make sense. That's not even the God of the Bible. Apparently, most of the church is following some other doctrine, some other God, because that's not the Bible doctrine. We should be peaceful. We should be joyful. We should prosper. We should be in health. You know, in First John, he says, I desire that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Well, your soul is your mind. You got to get your mind prosperous. Your mind got to prosper on the word. The Holy Spirit will work through the word, work through your mind, and he will show us our inheritance. He'll show us what we need. He'll show us what what is you know what what we have to have in our life. And if we want to be examples to the world, you know, if we want to, if we want to be, just think about it, if we go out and we say, we ask people to, you know, I'm going to lead you to Jesus. And Jesus will, will, will save you, and he'll heal you, he'll make a home from heaven, and you can be just like me. Well, you better have a good testimony if you want them to be like you. Amen? You better be able to show them something. Jesus said, when, Jesus said in Acts chapter 1 that the Holy Ghost you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you so that you will be my witnesses. See, we have to witness to the world who Jesus is. And I think the reason we haven't, the church as a whole, hasn't been a good witness is because we have not been um, allowing the Holy Spirit to work in our lives the way he wants to. Because if you remember in Acts chapter 1, he said, you shall receive power. See, the power source for the church, the power source for the kingdom of God is the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, then we'll change. Things will change. You know, I don't know about you, but I can think back in my life. I know who I was 35, 40 years ago. I was not the same person that, that is standing in front of you today. I'm totally different. I don't think the same, I don't act the same, I don't do the same thing. Something happened. I was transformed. And see, that's how we all, we all need to be. We need to be transformed or metamorphosed or changed. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. We become new. And it's because of that power that works in us. Look over in Philippians chapter 3. We need to know this, we need to know the power source for the kingdom. In Philippians chapter 3, verse number 10, the Apostle Paul, well, let's, let's back up, let's go to verse 8, let's start at verse 8. 
He says, <clears throat> Paul says, but indeed I count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ my Lord. Now he said, nothing compares to the knowledge of Jesus. Now remember, Apostle Paul was a very prominent person. He had it together, so to speak. He was probably in line to be the, uh, the high priest in, in, in Jerusalem. But he said, I count everything as lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them rubbish that I may gain, gain Christ. You see, our frame of mind has to be that way where nothing, nothing compares to Jesus. Nothing compares to our relationship with God. Verse 9, and be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which, which is from God by faith. So all normal knowledge does not compare to the knowledge of knowing Christ. And then he says, verse 10, he adds it, he goes, that I may know him. He said, everything is, everything is, is coming as rubbish, it's as dumb, it's, it's useless, that I may know him. Who's him? Jesus, right? That I may know Jesus, but he doesn't stop there. Listen, he goes on, and the power of his resurrection. What is the power of his resurrection? The power of his resurrection, who resurrected Jesus, was the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. So the Apostle Paul says, I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. He wants to know not only Jesus, he's saying, I want to know the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> I, want to, I want to know him <clears throat> and the Holy Spirit who raised him from the dead. Now, if you look, look at Romans chapter 8, you'll see this scripture that tells us exactly that. In Romans chapter 8, and verse number 11. <laughs> Actually, you're going to see in this verse, in this little verse, you'll see the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and the God the Holy Spirit. Verse 11, he says, But if the Spirit of Him... <clears throat> Who raised Jesus from the dead. If the spirit of him. The spirit. The Holy Spirit. Of him. Of who? Of God. The Father. The spirit of the Father. Who raised Jesus. So we see Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in this verse. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body. Through the spirit who dwells in you. So the Spirit of, of God the Father raised Jesus from the dead. But that, you know what he said? I like it in the first part. He said, but if, but if the Spirit who raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. You know, I know that when people get born again, that they have the Holy, the Holy Spirit comes in. And, and, and makes him a new creation and comes and lives inside of us We become a new creation. We talked about a few weeks ago about being born again and then being able to see the kingdom of God. So the Spirit of God does come into us, but it says, but if the Spirit of God, the <clears throat> Spirit of him who raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. Dwelling means he's alive. See, there's a lot of spirit, a lot of people who have the Spirit of God, but the Spirit is not alive in them. If the spirit is dormant. It's like faith, like we talked about faith. Faith without works is dead. It's dormant until you do something. Until you speak it, until you act upon it, 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 it has no power. So unless we allow the Holy Spirit to work in our life, no power is released. But if the spirit of him who dwelled, <clears throat> of, uh, raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, if that power, because he said you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. The power of the Holy Spirit, will, it says, will give life to your mortal body. It's not talking about your immortal, <clears throat> you know, thousand years from now. <clears throat> you need power right now. You need, we need power in our physical bodies to keep us healthy now. Amen? We need that now, but the Bible tells us we got it. If the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead 
dwells, is living, abiding, is, is alive in us, and we, we acknowledge him, and we, we, we walk by the Spirit, we, we are in the Spirit, we are praying in the Spirit. If it is alive in us, the Bible says that it will, it will give life to our mortal body. See, there's a lot of things that are trying to kill us. There are sicknesses and diseases, and you know, I, I think that um, I, there's a lot of stuff going on, just in my own personal opinion. I don't usually preach my opinions, but this is my opinion. That uh, medical science has, uh, has got to a place where they've given, they've given names to everything. I, you know, what, whatever it is, it might be some simple thing that a person has, but they got a long, a medical science name to it. <clears throat> and then when somebody gets a disease or gets a little problem, they give it this big name, and then people go, wow, you mean I have that? And maybe it just there was a stub toe. But they have a big, long, 12-letter word for it, for a stub toe. And so people go, wow, I got that. And then they say, yep, and you need this medication. And then they'll give you medication that has so many letters in it, you can't pronounce it. And so people get odd, wow, I'm taking that medication and that medication and that. I've heard people rattle off their, their medication and it's like they're proud. Well, I'm taking this and I'm taking this and I'm taking this. Doc says I have this and I have this and I have this. It's like it's a, it's like a prize. Where it should be something that we're, we're, we're shunning and casting down and lifting up, lifting up the power of the Holy Spirit. See, if you dwell on all them sicknesses and all them diseases and all this stuff that, that the doctors say we need, then that's what you're going to live with. But if you dwell upon the Holy Spirit, if you dwell upon the power of God, if the Holy Spirit could go to the depths of hell and raise Jesus' dead physical body, pull it out of hell, pull it out of the grave, he certainly can heal a headache. He certainly can heal a cancer. Amen. He certainly can heal all this stuff they put on us. You know, <laughs> I don't like to get into this stuff too much, but some of the stuff they, you know, when they tell things like they they tell people about like ADD. I mean, ADD is such a big thing now. When we were kids, you know, that was just a kid who just needed a slap on the back of the head. <laughs> Wake up! Straighten me right up. You know, I mean, how many, you know, everybody forgets things. And just because you forget something, either you got ADD or you're getting old. <laughs> That's, so you're labeled. No, I have the mind of Christ. The memory of the righteous is blessed. The Holy Spirit brings all things to my remembrance. This is what I say. I never say I'm getting old. I can't remember anymore. You know, and tell, telling my kids, you need, you need this drug, you need that drug, you need this drug. When we know that that drugs that they give people for ADD and all this other stuff, in the long run, it's going to give you more problems. When you get older, it's going to cause it, because what it does is it begins to wire your brain to only function with that medication. And then you can't function other, outside of that without it. Then you need to be detoxed. We just need the Holy Ghost. We just need prayer. We just need the word. I'm telling you, 90% of everybody's problems will go away if you would just read your Bible and pray and worship God. Amen. Most all things will go away. And if it doesn't all go away, if something else is persisting, then we just need hands laid upon us. We need to be anointed with oil. We just need to have people pray over us. We just need to confess with our mouth that by his stripes I'm healed. These are things, we just need to go back to the Holy Ghost. Peter, James, and John, when we read through the Bible, when we read about the disciples, when we read about Jesus, you don't hear of any of this stuff. You know, there's like two scriptures in the Bible, in the New Testament, that talked about Paul left somebody somewhere sick, and he told Timothy, drink a little wine for your bad stomach. Two times, and so people made a huge doctrine out of Sickness and disease because of two things. Or that Paul said, 
uh, I write this letter in, in big, big, big letters. And they say, oh, he had some kind of eye problem. And so they make a doctrine out of it where all through the Bible, you don't see Peter calling in and saying, Jesus, I can't show up today. I got the flu. I can't come to Jesus. I can't follow you today because this problem or that problem. You don't see that. Can you imagine you being around the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, wherever he goes, when he healed the sick, he raised the dead, he cast out the demons, and you're traveling with him? I mean, do you think the disciples were very sickly? That they all had all these problems? I don't think so. But are we disciples? Are we traveling with Jesus? Do we have the same spirit he does? See that none of these things should be part of our lives. We've just been conned into this stuff. There's a lot of stuff we've been conned into. And I'm not denying disease. I'm not, I'm not, when this is not the Christian science, I'm not denying that it's there. I deny its right to, to function in my body and in the body of Christ. The, 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 the key to walking in divine health is is walking in the spirit. It says right here that he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal body. That's your physical body. He will give life to all your physical body. <clears throat> so we, do, we need to allow him to resurrect our body. You know, you need to be speaking to your body. You need to be have anointed words come out of your mouth declaring that by his stripes I'm healed. I have the mind of Christ. No weapon formed against me will prosper. I, I you know, it, it's really funny, and I didn't plan this at all, but, you know, I've, I've watched TV once in a while, and, and when I see these advertisements come on for all this different sickness and disease and, and all these drugs, I, you know, when I see it, I go, praise the Lord, I don't have to take any of that. Thank you, Jesus, I don't need any of that. And it just comes out of my mouth. I didn't even, it just started happening, you know, it was quite a while ago. Oh, but every time I look at it, and I just when somebody talks about all these different diseases, I, I raise my hand and I say, "Thank God, I don't have any of that stuff." Thank you, Lord, your, your word, you have healed me and delivered me from that stuff. Thank you, Lord, that I don't have to take medications. Thank you, Lord, for that the medication that I take is is all comes from the Word of God. <clears throat> Health and uh, healing emanates from the Holy Spirit in us. We just have to receive it. I receive that anointing. I receive that healing into my life. He is the power of the kingdom. The Holy Spirit is the power of the kingdom. Now, if you just think about it in, in the Bible, through the Bible, the Holy Spirit was present. I, I, I said this last week. He was present at the creation of the world. He was, he was present at the... Um, he was present when, when the, uh, at the, in the book of Revelation. Hallelujah. Just go lay hands on her and command, command that thing to stop it. No. Stop it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. See, the devil just, just, just doesn't want to hear about health and healing. Hallelujah. Speak to it. Command it. Stop. Peace. Be still. Loose her and let her go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you for your healing power. Praise you, Lord. Say, we bind your power. You will not touch her. Loose her and let her go. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your healing power. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we know that in the Bible, even when, even when Paul was dead, the disciples went around him and, and prayed and, and God resurrected him from, from the dead. So we thank you, Father, for, for healing, healing power in the name of Jesus. Healing power in the name of Jesus. So the Holy Spirit is the creator. He, create, he was with God in the beginning when God created the world. He was, he was hovering over the world. He performed miracles through Moses, through Moses in Exodus, when he, when he was deliver, delivering the, the Israelis from, from the Egyptians. 
He performed miracles, signs, and wonders. The Holy Spirit was in Joshua when he caused the sun and the moon to stop. The Holy Spirit was upon Samson in the book of Judges when the power of the Holy Spirit came upon him and, and drove out uh, the, the Philistines, drove them out of the land. The Holy Spirit came upon David, strengthened him to kill the bear and the lion, strengthened him uh, to kill the giant. The Holy Spirit was upon Elijah when he made an offer, when he made offerings in the book of 1 Kings. And the Bible says that the, the uh, Spirit of God just lapped up the offerings. He was in Elisha when Elisha's bones were, were dead and they were in the grave. And they threw a dead body on top of them. And the, the anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit resurrected him. The, the Holy Spirit was in Solomon to give him wisdom, a wisdom like no other man had. It came from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was, was on Nehemiah that gave him the joy and the strength to build the wall in Jerusalem. For the joy of the Lord is my strength. The Holy Spirit was with Daniel in the lion's den. When the lions came after Daniel and, and God sent angels, anointed angels to drive, to keep the, the lions from touching David. The Holy Spirit was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they were in the fiery furnace and it protected them from all the uh, fire that was gonna try to burn them up. The Holy Spirit was there. He's there for us. He's always there for us. He'll never leave us or forsake us. Amen. He's the healer. He's the deliverer. <clears throat> he was with Paul when Paul was casting out demons in Acts chapter 16. The spirit of divination was, it came upon um, a young girl and Paul realizing, wow, how? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. And he cursed the demon and said, come out in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says the demon left. He was with Peter and John at the gate beautiful when they went to, uh, when they went to prayer and his, they found a man crippled that he healed him and said, silver and gold have I not, but such as I have. And what did he have? What did they have? They had the power of the Holy Spirit upon them and the Holy Spirit healed them. The Holy Spirit was with John on the Isle of Patmos when he would reveal to him all of the book of Revelation and that which was to come. See, it's all the Holy Spirit. It's all about the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is the one who imparts these things to us. The Holy Spirit is the one who does things to us and for us. He is, he is our, he's in us so that we can be witnesses to Jesus. He is the power of the kingdom of God. It's all about the Holy Spirit. That's why we have to seek Him. That's why we have to allow Him to work in our life. We have to declare with the, what the Bible says, the Spirit of the Lord is liberty, and where the, where the Spirit is, there, there is liberty, there is freedom. The Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is freedom. So the Holy Spirit, is He's also pictured as powerful as He is, He's also pictured as very gentle. We see him when he when he come down upon uh, Jesus when Jesus was being baptized. The Bible pictures him as a dove. Not that the Holy Spirit is a bird or anything like a bird. It didn't say he was a bird. It said he came like a dove. Came he was gentle, and he came upon Jesus. The Holy Spirit has feelings. In the book of Ephesians, the Bible tells us that grieve not. Grieve not the Holy Spirit. See, we, we grieve the Holy Spirit when we sin. We grieve the Holy Spirit when we argue and when we fight. When we, when we come against each other and mankind, we grieve the Holy Spirit. We hurt Him. We don't want to hurt the Holy Spirit. I mean, it seems, it seems so very strange that in God, the Creator, and we can hurt Him. And we can't hurt Him by our actions. 
So the Bible says, grieve not the Spirit of God. <clears throat> Remember when, when Jesus came, we're about to celebrate the birth of Jesus. When Jesus came, you can kind of, kind of picture that night when Mary and Joseph came to Jerusalem and they went into, the, into a, a manger. You almost picture when you see the pictures of it, just a, a quiet night, and beautiful stars out, you know, the, the cattle are lowing, the shepherds are with their sheep, everything is calm, we sing silent night, holy night, all is calm, everything's calm, and what happened? The Savior came, Jesus came, as a little baby, gentle, sweet, but what happened when the Holy Spirit came into the earth? It was altogether different. When the Holy Spirit came into the earth, the Bible said there came from heaven a sound as a mighty rushing wind. It not only shook the place where they were in, it shook the whole city. Because the Bible says people from all around, or all around Jerusalem, people from all different nations that were there celebrating, they all heard this sound, they all came in. And they wanted to find out what happened. When the Holy Spirit came, he came with power. He came with wind and noise. He brought with him a supernatural gift. He was heard throughout the city. In the book of Revelations, in Revelations chapter 4, it talks about, well, I'm going to read this. Let's go to Revelations chapter 4. We're talking about the power of the kingdom of God. See, the apostle Paul said, it's not in enticing words of men that I come. See, there are people, there are men and women out there who are great emot or motivational speakers who can say things so eloquently that it'll motivate you, it'll move your, it'll move your, your, your soulish area. But we don't need to be moved so much in the soulish area, we need to be moved in the spirit. Mm -hmm. See, it's the Holy Spirit that moves us. It's the Holy Spirit we need. We need demonstrations of the Holy Spirit. Revelations 4, verse number 5. It's a picture of, of the throne, at the throne of God. Verse 5, it says, And from the throne proceeded lightnings, thunderings, and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. See, when we get to the throne of God, <clears throat> where the Holy Spirit is, there, there's a lot of action going on. There's thunders and lightnings and voices. So the Holy Spirit is, is the power source. He's the dunamis. He's the... He's the power behind everything God does. And we as the church, we need to tap into that power. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to work in our life. Throughout the Bible, whenever God spoke, the Holy Spirit worked. The Holy Spirit, the power of God. When we speak, God wants us to do the same thing. When we speak, he said, I will watch over my word to perform it. I'll do it. But we have to speak and anointed by the Holy Spirit. Not meekly and, and mildly, but we have to boldly declare. When the Bible says preach, preaching means heralding, or mean, means shouting, means declaring these things. And I'm here to declare the power of God is present to heal and deliver us. The power of God is here. The Holy Spirit makes sure that, that God's word does not return void. He creates whatever we speak. If you speak things in faith, you speak things out of the word of God, the Holy Spirit will, is there to take our words and begin to create things. He will create health in your body if you speak if you speak about the healing power of God. He will, he, will, he will create prosperity in your life 
if you declare the prosperity of God. He will create joy and love and peace in your life if you speak about it. But if you meditate upon things that are that are that are evil and and uh, hurting and hateful and and sickness and disease, that's the stuff that comes into your life. You have to change your thinking. We need a continual filling of the Holy Spirit. You don't get filled once with the Holy Spirit and that's good enough for life. I heard one preacher say after a while the Spirit leaks out. <clears throat> we start ministering by the Holy Spirit and you, you get exhausted. You know, when I used to have Sunday morning and Sunday night services and I used to preach two messages on on Sunday, I mean, it was, it was rough on my physical body because I gave out so much. When I would get home at night, you know, whatever time I got home, nine o'clock on Sunday night, I was exhausted. I mean, I just wanted to plop down in a chair and, you know, I didn't want to move. And then, you know, I, I, it was kind of a tradition I heard from ministers that ministers always took Monday off. I couldn't. I had a, Monday had to be my recharge day because I had to get filled again with the Holy Spirit because I gave out so much on Sunday. <clears throat> See, a lot of people don't, under, don't, don't understand it, and only, only a preacher can understand this. When you preach, how much is drained out of you? How it is tiring to preach. <laughs> And it, it pulls a lot out of you when you're preaching the Word of God. Your physical body gets tired. So you've got to recharge yourself. In the book of Ephesians, listen to what it says in Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 17. It says, therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Understand what the will of the Lord is. If you want to know what the will of the Lord is, he's going to tell you right here what the will of the Lord is. Understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not be drunk with wine, in which is it's a dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. The will of the Lord is don't look to the flesh, look to the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Well, Pastor, how do I get filled with the Spirit? I'm glad you asked, because the Apostle Paul tells us in the next verse. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in our heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. <clears throat> How do you get filled with the Holy Spirit? Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Being in, a, being in a state of worship and praise. Talking to people when we're built up by worship and praise and, and singing songs. Giving thanks. Being a thankful person. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day. Thank you for my healthy body. Thank you for my sound mind. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I pray that that is one of the biggest words you say all your life is thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for help. Thank you for healing. Thank you for blessing. Thank you, me, you meet all my needs. Giving thanks <clears throat> and then submitting one to another. In other words, preferring others above ourselves. Giving of ourselves. Allowing God to use us. We need to worship God and praise him, <clears throat> submitting and loving one another. And that's what we're doing here today. That's, what, that's the purpose of all this right here is because we want to show the love of God. We care for people. This is a way to be filled with the Spirit just by doing it. When you see people receiving things and they're, they're happy to get a meal and they're happy to get a blanket and they're happy somebody cares... That will recharge your spirit. You'll begin, you'll begin to feel good about, about your life. That's the Holy Spirit just bearing witness with your spirit that it is good to show love. Amen? Amen. Amen? So we need that power of the Holy Spirit. 
It is, it is the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, that is the power of the kingdom. We have, to, we have to start majoring more on the things of the Holy Spirit. We have to bring more life in our life and in our church by the Holy Spirit. And I pray over these next 50 days or so, as, as we are individually, and I pray you're all doing this at home. Each day you're inviting the Holy Spirit in. Show me, Holy Spirit. Teach me, Holy Spirit. Show me how to fellowship. What do you want? What do you need? What can I do? <clears throat> all this stuff. You just keep doing it. You, you know, you just do it every day. You don't have to go on for hours and hours, but just do it. Just make sure you, you spend some time with the Holy Spirit. And after 50 days, you're going to have, you're going to have a greater understanding of who he is and what he wants to do in your life. He'll begin to reveal things to you. God doesn't reveal things to people who don't care much. It's the people who care about the things of the kingdom. It's the people who care about it. See, he said, he, he said in, the, in the Gospels, he said, I reveal these things to my disciples. Disciples are people who are disciplined. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to tap into this Holy Spirit power. What's going to set our church off from all the other churches? Holy Spirit. Miracles, signs, and wonders. That's the, that's the thing. We don't, every, all, every church has the same book. We all go by the same book. Some go by some parts. Some go by other parts. But we want to go by the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is what birthed the church. Everything's got to be about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is supernatural. People like supernatural things. That's why there's so many movies that are about supernatural things. So many, you know, things about paranormal. You know, everybody runs to see that movie. They're trying to tap into something in the spirit realm. But it's the wrong spirit they're going after. It's the Holy Spirit we got to be going after. The things of the Spirit, things that are good. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm going to say goodbye to our Facebook uh, people now because I want to do something else here today with you guys. So um, if you're out there today, remember, it's the Holy Spirit. You need, the Bible says, if, you're, if, if the Holy Spirit hasn't revealed to you Revealed to you. The Spirit of God needs to reveal Jesus to you. It needs to reveal to you that you're a sinner and you need a Savior. If he's done that today, just take a moment and invite Jesus into your life. <coughs> the Bible says if you'll confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. So just pray that prayer. Ask Jesus into your life. Amen? Amen. God bless you and we'll hopefully see you next week. <laughs>